Hello, I'm Commander Xander. I remember so that it's very critic doesn't have to. And neither should you. Well, I've done a lot of Will Ferrell movies lately, and some of them Hobo Reviews has covered. But this time, I am going to do a Will Ferrell movie that Hobo Reviews did that I actually got permission to do. Hey, Playboy, is Willie around? No. He's probably digging a hole or looking up something in his box. Wick guacamole! Yes. Fine. Can I review Step Brothers? I don't give a fuck. He was only in the end of it anyways. It was my review, so knock yourself out. I don't give a fuck. Thanks. This is Step Brothers. Step Brothers was a 2008 film that once again brought back the combination of Will Ferrell, Adam McKay, and John C. Riley. Because they wanted to try and tr pull off another triumph after the success they had with Talladega Nights. But that year they were competing with arguably the greatest movie of all time, The Dark Knight. Could they possibly put together a successful movie, I'll be one that won't compete with The Dark Knight, but a successful movie that people will enjoy? Yeah, that's good. Yes, obviously. So this is Step Brothers. Granted for the movie does go to Columbia as well as Relativity Media and all those involved. And no, this is not for military purposes. This is strictly for a review. As we start the movie with a quote. Because quite frankly, reading something is vital in today's day and age. But it's an important theme to the movie. It says, families is where our nation finds hope, where wings take dream. None ever more prominently than this current day and age. We need to speak with this memo, which George W. Bush actually quoted. Now, are we talking about 41 or 43 Bush? As we see those involved with the movie, and the title of the movie, which... Apparently has nothing going on except some random noises in the background. Oh, now I see what's going on. We see Will Ferrell's character about to make some nacho cheese. There he is. Also in this movie, oh, as we see John C. Riley and what he's doing. Oh, he's trying to find oh nice combination. Yes, you might remember her from the Elf movie. She's back too. And right away, you can see the problem with this movie. It's basically looking like a sequel of the 40-year-old virgin. Now, this movie itself doesn't have any problems, but you can see what the problem is. What kind of a 40-year-old lives with his parent? And by the way... You can see John C. Riley is a rock star. Um, the parents get together, and thus we see why the movie's called Step Brothers. I'm watching you. Wow, talk about total awkwardness. And they decide, you know what? This is how they, this is how people get to know each other, folks, at a, at a, at a press conference, at a convention. My God. What, what, whatever happened to, hi, my name is so-and-so, I work for so-and-so, what's your name? Hi, my name is so-and-so, I work for this so-and-so. You want to be friends? No. He ganders her in the eyes, they instantly connect and say, fuck it, let's do it, and by the way, while we're doing it, here's what I do. Okay. Apparently that's what this has come to in today's society. Here's what I don't get. Don't you think they should have gotten actors that were like way, way older than that if you're going to get Will Ferrell and John C. Riley? Because quite frankly, it doesn't make sense unless they got hooked up so fucking young that the age difference kind of makes sense. 
Yeah, you can see neither of them are quite too thrilled to be living together. Wait, she has a younger son? Wait, you were working at PetSmart and got let go? That might be the best decision you ever made unless you got to do something so stupid that you probably channeled an inner Doug Walker and he probably just pulled off his shirt and said, I quit! I quit! I quit! I quit! I quit! I quit! Although he probably didn't do it to the tune of Bohemian Rhapsody. Because he's not too thrilled that you people are moving together. So, as a result, they have to get to know each other so well. And what better way than a family dinner, which is... Why don't you take a picture? It'll last longer. Why don't you stop being so confrontational, Dale? I'm not the one staring at me. So, Brennan, how about you? I know you used to work at PetSmart. Right? That's right, Mr. Doback. Okay, call me Robert. That's right, Robin. Robert. Robert. Actually, Brennan is a... Well, you gotta give the parents credit. At least they're trying to get... Some really, really good. How good? I've been called the songbird of my generation. By people who've heard me. He's bragging about his singing skills. And Brennan... Can sing really well. So Dale so can rock so the hell well. out of drums. I mean, I don't know where he and thus, entitlement. Maybe it was his mother passing. What about Brennan? And from what you've told me, his younger brother Derek's been quite successful. Well, certainly when his father and I split, that was difficult for him. And this one time Apparently, so difficult that he has to be latched on to you. Again, what the hell's up with the age difference in this movie? That's my only complaint. He sang a song from an old pirate. Oh no. Derek Hey, at least the football team could sing fucking well. Proving once again how flexible athletes can be. Ah, the power of a student athlete. At least they won't have to skip uh, a few years and go straight to the pros. This, of course, does not bode well for Brennan, and thus his confidence got shadowed down. And what the hell is up with that ponytail in the background? I'm sorry, he just... I just can't... Derek went on to win the contest by lip-syncing I Size Baby. Oh, come on! That's like the easiest fucking thing to lip-sync! You just have to sound like you're saying the things and just do the motions, and of course, Ice Ice Baby's always gonna triumph. Well, he was gonna probably win anyways, cause come on, Ice Ice Baby versus opera singing. Who would win that one? Hmm, tough choice. I just want you to know I hate you. So does my dad. Actually, your dad doesn't hate you, only you hate you yourself. Obviously, these two are still having a difficult time getting to know each other so well. Okay, do that. I am warning you right now. If you touch my drums, I will Apparently, he gets really defensive when someone touches his drums, even if you use. Okay, nobody needs to see that. Wow, really? You're that? I hate to use it because it sounds like a naughty pun, but that was ballsy of you. Which, of course, leads to him getting the shit beaten out of him, and... Wow, really? You're gonna strangle him with headphones? What the hell's wrong with you? That's a convenient way to use the drum. Ooh. Really? Because your balls were all over the drum. Oh, wow. Wait, wait, wait. That, that, that's gonna... Oh, nice going! He got the neighborhood dog to come over! This is not gonna end well.
I hope you're saving his life and not still being pissed at him because he banged your drums literally with his balls. Okay, apparently he's still beating the crap out of him. So technically he saved him from the dog while still beating the crap out of him. Meanwhile, this is why you never leave your kids at home. She gets an urgent phone call in the middle of a meeting. Typical cliche. Oh man, you have caused a riot. Well, this is way, way more entertaining than today's WWE. I can tell you that. I think the dog's cheering for... Oh my god! Please tell me the dog ain't gonna hump her! Oh my god, that dude. Okay, that is one horny dog. First he goes after... And guess who else gets a call? Oh my god. Ooh, and away he goes. I don't believe in talking about people's personal lives behind their back. This... You don't know he likes you, right? This is horrible. She had to get the hose to separate herself from the dog, by the way. As we get to the Derek's family. Really? You have to acapella sing a fucking Guns N' Roses song. Why couldn't you acapella sing one of the stupid high school musical songs? You're ruining a great song by acapella singing it. Horrible. Hey, pay attention, buddy. Your own fault for trying to brag about how great your singing is compared to your wife, and apparently that doesn't stop him from finishing up the a cappella song. Really? Because when I'm nearly on the verge of getting run over by another car, I would have a traumatic effect, but apparently it doesn't phase these people. I give them credit. They've got no... Yeah. And a nice big family dinner, which is where the tide turns between the stepbrothers. Both of them are super jealous of Derek's instant success. Well, not really instant success, but success nonetheless. So, those two are having a great moment. He's impressed with Derek. A dream, the boat, the bar. Yeah, it's a dream. A boat? You have a dream about being on a boat, on a boat, motherfucker! Look at me, I'm sitting on a boat. I'm sorry, that had to fucking happen. So now they're in the treehouse and finally starting to get along. And this completely makes them friends forever. Dale beats the crap out of Derek and knocks him out of the treehouse. And now they're buddies. Just like that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He didn't call him anything. He said it was our pleasure to have you over for dinner. That's what he's saying. Now, this I don't get. Okay, what the hell? You barely know this guy, and now you're instantly hooked on to him because he punched your husband, who apparently you kind of are getting tired of. And now you're going to get all horny with him. What the hell? Do you see something wrong with this picture? Kids shouldn't have to see this crap. Oh my god, this is absolutely unbelievably disturbing. I'm sure every boy is fantasizing in this moment, which I'm not going to save you the trouble of. So they go to interview their jobs and... 
Well, I mean, they dressed up, I give them that, but I think they went a little over the top with the tuxedos, don't you think? I mean, come on, you're just interviewing for a job. It's not like you're going to a big fancy dinner or a wedding, which would be more appropriate for this kind of suit. And as you probably imagine, the interviews don't really go as normal as you would anticipate an interview to go. Well, Pam. No, my name is Pam. Okay. If you're mispronouncing the interviewer's name, this can only go downhill from here. I'm Dale. I'm Brennan's stepbrother, and I think I might be able to help with the Pam Pam dilemma. You called her Miss Lady. Pam. Well, at least he's close to pronouncing a name. At least it's not as bad as Steve Martin's French impersonation of Inspector Clouseau in the Hard Bell Cow. M. 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 That was it. No, there's just one M. What do you say? We and Triple M. Yeah, we uh, all right, yes, that's a uh, sometimes useful exercise. At another interview, they come up with a brilliant idea, and actually, this is a brilliant idea. They interview the interviewer. Yeah, I'm actually not comfortable answering that. Come on! We're doing the interview now, not you. Okay, here's a shot out of a cannon. Oprah, Barbara Walters, your wife. You gotta fuck one, marry The problem is, the questions are so inappropriate that the interview ends right there. Um, so you can probably imagine where this winds up leading to. No jabs, and no, by the way, they got beaten up by a bunch of kids and were forced to eat white poo. I am not kidding. Okay, you are absolutely pathetic if you're getting your ass handed to you by kids. If there's, a, if there's child beatings, isn't there a thing for adult beatings when a child beats up an adult? I mean, come on. If adults have to be tried for beating up kids, shouldn't kids be tried for beating up adults? What's the problem with that? So, Derek is here doing some more bragging and getting set for selling the house. So they can get apartments and jobs. Maybe they're seeing something we don't know. Let's give them some As we can see how how decent Will Ferrell is as a singer. So after that moment, will you both just please give us some privacy? Just they will do everything in their power to prevent them from selling the house. And by golly, do they ever succeed? Wow. So, eventually, they all get together for Derek's big birthday. Which, by the way, one of his uh, compadres just happens to be the most annoying person that absolutely ruined Fox NFL Sunday and the pick segments, in my opinion. In my very, very humble opinion. Rob fucking Riggle. Meanwhile, in the bathroom... What is wrong with this woman? Good lord! Now she's in the men's room! Okay. They mentioned that Dale and Brennan need to see a psychiatrist. Maybe this woman needs to see a psychiatrist because she... Oh my god, are you nuts? Playboy, I can see why you viewed this movie. Good lord, this is your scenes written all over it, doesn't it? Oh, you better believe it. Quick guacamole! Yes. Did you even mention any of this when you did this review? You know, I didn't say I can't even remember. I have to go back to the replay and take a look at that. Well, either way, this is just sick. You know that, right? Oh, and after they... Well, I'm not going to go into further detail than that, but she does something else, which might find shocking. Oh, my God. You're incredible. What the hell? She... I'm not even going to go there, either. Get to you. Yep, there's Rob Riggle. Riggle, you will never be a success. I'm just telling you right, plain and simple, in front of the camera. You will never be a success, and you ruin the best thing to happen to Fox Centerville Sunday. I used to enjoy the pick segments when Jimmy Kimmel and Frank Eliando were the pickers. Not only do you not know how to pick, you're not fucking funny! Derek, you are an outstanding actor. Thank you. 
Go get a life, you Kansas City bastard. This is the image I have, but sometimes when I'm making love to your mother, and I realize that this is where you came from, Okay, we 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 stop 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 stop. No one needs to visualize this. We've already had enough visualization problems with this movie. Robert, that was fucking awesome. Thank you. You got a lot of this, buddy, and you got a lot of these. Oh my god. So, Dalen Brennan says, "Enough of this. Let's talk about what we're really here for." Promoting a fantasy world experience. Worldwide prestige. Cue the boat music. Um, after this intro, we get to this. Cue boats and hose, people. This will get stuck in your mind. At least we got the first catchy song of this night. Are you kidding? This is absolutely insanely good. I'm hooked with this product. Hell yeah. Because whenever you're rapping on a boat, that seems to get you instant credibility. Now, eventually, you realize, no one's steering the boat, so what happens to said boat? Well, I think this pretty much sums it up. Well, they wrecked the boat. Did they wreck the hose as well? Sorry. What did you guys think of the presentation? Brennan, I think that what you did to Robert's boat was horrid. Yes. Having said that, I think that both of you boys showed a lot of enthusiasm and inventiveness. Yes, thank you. Oh, this is going to end badly. Yeah, yeah. They destroyed our dream and you're calling it inventive. No, 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 no. What kind of a dream is it? Yes, you're riding around in a boat. What's the dream about that? Four years at least before we can sail anywhere. And you could care less. Admit it. I will not admit that because it is not true. Oh, yeah. But... You know, I do think that you could show... This does lead to one of the more iconic scenes of this movie. Speak to my son. Attentiveness to your son and your stepson who obviously need you. Not really. Dr. Novak, you've been very cold and unsupportive of our dreams. You wrecked my fucking boat, you go. Yep, that's what happens when you mess with the dream. You get called a goon. Like that. Well, your son's costing me eighty thousand dollars. Really? You paid eighty thousand dollars for a boat? You realize what you can get for $80,000? A decent house, a luxurious car. You spent eighty grand on a boat? What, what were you even gonna do on the boat? You, you, you spent eighty thousand dollars just sitting on a boat. What kind of a fucking dream is that? I mean, come on. If you're gonna retire, Go do it in Florida! There's plenty to do in Florida! That doesn't involve a boat! Look, we can figure about this so, of course, he gets upset and... They disciplined him by the old spanking method, which you can't get away with in today's society. He goes to the Cheesecake Factory, he comes back, he walks right into them sleepwalking, and he tries to take matters into his own hands. He's told not to interrupt with sleepwalking. Now honestly, what could possibly go wrong if you try to wake up a sleepwalker? Okay, apparently listen to the wife, because she knows what the hell she's talking about. So, of course, they... Oh, by the way, you can see the patch where they fixed the wall. Um, You know, I'm amazed after all that, he only suffered a neck spasm. That was quite a rough ride, if I do say so myself. 
the the tree somewhat salvaged, and we transition to the dinner table where they make a big announcement. You kind of knew this was going to happen, the way things were going south in a heartbeat. They should have never gotten together because now they're splitting up. What meds? Oh, apparently she is taking something. Oh my god, really? No, 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 there is no Christmas miracle with it. Oh my god, in front of the kids and the parents. Hey, muscle. Hey, sweetie, can you grab me a beer? Get you another They managed to get away by just think. What did you get for Christmas? I got this Mikimoto Pro necklace. What kind of a fucking kid gets a fucking necklace for Christmas? You're a spoiled one, aren't you? Because when I were to get something for Christmas, I would, I don't know, not want something that high and fancy. Although this isn't a bad option for you techno-savvy people. Get the Blackberry! It did me wonders! Eventually we get to the news at some point! Um, I'm sorry. It's your fault to begin with because it's your fault for getting this whole thing get together and thinking what could possibly go wrong and then boom, this happens. It's 150% your fault, not your fault. But of course, Derek says this. Of course it's their fault. They're the two biggest dickheads in the world. Said by the bigger dickhead in the world because... Again, he sounds total douchey in this movie. And like every fucking 40 year old has to do when their parents get divorced, they act like fucking kids and cry. Oh my god, even she's crying? What the hell? Okay, I'm sorry, Dale. He said to grow up, not to throw up. And what could you possibly be throwing up from? They're getting divorced. You're getting upset. I know, it's sucking. First of all, you should not be crying because you're a fucking 40-year-old grown man. Get alive! Or aren't you going to turn into the next 40-year-old virgin? Although it's a little late for that since you seem to be doing it with uh, your stepbrother's wife. Uh, two, what could you possibly be throwing up from? Unless you're like really, really, really sick or you went on a roller coaster ride, you should not be throwing up for any goddamn reason. But of course, because we've already have enough disturbing things in this movie as it is. That is the worst acting leaning up to it. Oh my god. Okay, that's wrong. And, by the way, this further proves he's the bigger dick hole. He's taking a photo of the two of them crying with the dad. Oh, that'll be a great Christmas card for next year, kiddies. So they do get the house sold because now everyone's moving on. They move on with their lives. They get new jobs. They actually grow up. Can you believe that? It took their parents splitting up for them to finally give them a stiff dose of reality. And they get reunited at the, dare I use air quotes, fucking Catalina wine mixer. Because Brennan is under the impression that, hey, let's try and get back together and patch things up. Because that worked out so well before. So, of course, the 80s group that they hired on decided to get so defensive that they couldn't sing anything else and so the Kelly and wine mixer is about to turn to a disaster and then the climatic moment uh remember from the blades of glory review when i mentioned at the beginning they had that song that they used in this movie well enter opera singing for the climactic moment along with dale's drum banging 
which if anything proves how legit of an opera singer Will Ferrell is and what he could possibly do when he decides to call a career with acting. With everyone glued and you're thinking, oh, here we go again. Oh, yeah, fuck you, Rob Riggle. We eventually get to not one, not two, but three people having some weird fantasies while this song is being played. Led by, oh, Miss Horny Wife. What could she possibly be fantasizing about Dale this time? Okay, that kind of makes sense. The Barbarian going up with... Okay, again, makes sense. Okay, you are distracting us from Will Ferrell's brilliant singing with, again, weird, disturbing, mesmerizing visions. So, of course, everything gets back together and everything seems to be all peachy after the... By the way, he's wearing a Yoda shirt. Rock the fuck out of those drums, Daryl! No, seriously, that's what the dad said. See, his opera singing so good, this is what happens to the ice sculpture of the helicopter. It shatters. See, Will Ferrell needs to be an opera singer. Encore, encore. He can give the opera man a run for his money on SNL. And the opera man was actually pretty hilarious. And I air quoted fucking Kelly and Wine Mixer because this is what happens when uh, they actually make the Kelly and Wine Mixer a success. They say this. After everyone's going nuts. Including Rob Riggle, who should be crying in a corner right now because I can't stand that man. He's actually sweating underneath. You can see the sweat in the armpit area. Yep. Fucking Catalina Wine Mixer. That's how fucking important this fucking Catalina Wine Mixer is. We have to say the word Fucking for emphasis. So, of course, this obviously leads to, you could probably imagine what happens. They get back together. They reunite. They realize we're going to, oh, okay. Dale finally tells her, get a fucking life. This is crazy. I'm a, I'm a mother. I have two children. I have a husband. Yes. You are an absolute weirdo of a freaking... So, they're doing really well, they have a karaoke business going, and they finally come to their senses. No, seriously, they, they actually say they finally come to their senses. Remember when they wrecked the boat? Well, they used what little pieces they were able to find, then redecorated the treehouse, which actually is a lot cooler now. See, that's a bigger investment than, say, sitting on it for ever and ever and ever until you die in the water, possibly. So the Gilded Lady lives, and yes, they're finally happy because their treehouse looks badass. Probably the badassiest treehouse in the history of treehouses. Oh, man, are you fucking kidding me? They actually got him crossbows. Okay, that, 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 that's not a good idea. That, that's not good. I can only imagine where this is going to end up. And if you didn't believe me that they said they finally came to their senses, well, here's this line. See, I have to agree with the psychiatrist. She's honest. She knows what's going on. She absolutely understands that this is absolutely nuts and that there is absolutely everything that's horrendous about this. Of course. But Brennan sure can wear the shit out of that pirate hand. Okay, what happened to him just being a patient? You're, you're, okay, now you two are really starting to get it on. At least they're not going to do anything weird like the other two. Great, just in time for Hanukkah. And thus ends the movie. So that was Step Brothers. Again, a wonderful success. It's hilarious, complete hilarity after complete hilarity with each scene that you see. Even the disturbing scenes, you can kind of get a chuckle out of. Although it's still disturbing to say the least. 
Will Ferrell and Anna McKay once again strike gold with John C. Riley, and it's another instant success. Albeit not as great as The Dark Knight, because for God's sakes, you can't really top The Dark Knight in its dramatic action. But still, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more on the light side, I would definitely check out Step Brothers. Hey! Are you doing another fucking movie that I did? I'm the Commander Xander, and if you excuse me, I gotta explain something to Willie. Oh, Willie! You weren't even in this freaking review! I don't care! It's fucking under my fucking title! Yeah, the Playboy said you weren't even part of the movie! You were only there at the end! It was his fucking review! I don't care, my man! It's my video, my man! Why do you keep doing it to me, my man? Do you realize how difficult it is for me to get a review, my man? A review, my man?